Hey guys, I'm Tommy, a developer advocate at Linode, and welcome to the fifth video in this Django series. So in this video, we're going to be taking all the knowledge we've learned from the previous videos and using it to build a Django project. So we're going to build a very simple project and the project is going to be a word dictionary. So it's going to be a simple dictionary where a user can come and input a word and then get the meaning or the definition of that word. So let's get straight into this video. But before we start this video, I also like to tell you that Linode has a 60 day $100 credit that you can use to follow along with this series because we've been using Linode for some services in this series. So without wasting any time, please subscribe to this channel and let's get straight into this video. So what we're going to do now is that the project we've been building before, we are just going to add this word dictionary feature in it. So we're going to have a new URL that is going to say slash dictionary. And once the user goes to that, our website slash dictionary, they're going to see a word dictionary. So let's do that real quick. So let's control C and V. So right here we say dictionary. And let's say views dot dictionary and name should be dictionary. We'll save that. And right here in views, actually let's just close this up, close this and close this. So right here, let's have a new function before we close that. Cool. So right here we can say def dictionary. And let's say it's taking a request. And we want to return render request dictionary.html. So this is what we want to do. And everything should be working, but we don't have any file named dictionary.html. So let's create that file. So right here in templates, we want to create a new file named dictionary.html. But I have a simple bootstrap template that we are going to use in this video. So this is a template right here. This is a bootstrap template. So I'm just going to move this index.html. Actually, I'm going to rename it to dictionary.html. Right. Then I'm going to move it. I'm just going to copy it right here into my template folder. And what I also want to do is this uh, asset file, CSS files, connected to this dictionary.html file. So from what we've been learning, we know that this should go into the static folder. So once we bring them inside static folder, that should work. So now that we know that we have that done, what we just need to do is that in Let's first test this out. So let's run our project again. So right here, let's say Python free manage.py run server. So it says it can open no file directories. Okay, so we made a mistake in it should be py. So it is running. Now let's come here and open the project up. So let's go to slash dictionary. So you can see that we have this simple template showing in slash dictionary, but it has some CSS files and some styling, but those styling are not showing. So you should know why. And that is because let's close this up and close that. That is because in this dictionary.html where we are linking the CSS files, we didn't have the static tags. So let's do that. The first thing we need to do, as we know, is that we need to add load static right here. So we say load static right there. Then down here, where we are using the CSS file, we're just going to say static. And right here also, we're going to close that static tag by doing this. So that should work. And we're going to do it again for this CSS file down here and this CSS file down here. So once we save this and come back and hit refresh, you now see that it's showing this template with the good styling and the CSS added to it. So let's just quickly change some stuff like the title, all of this and this. So right here where we have the title, let's just say dictionary. And then right here, we can just change that fixed nav bar. So let's just say dictionary. And all of this, we don't really need that. So we can just easily comment that out. So this right here. We can just comment this out. So that has been commented. Once we hit refresh, good. So we just have dictionary and we have the search bar right here. So we want the user to like input a word, like let's say I, and once they hit search, we want them to get the meaning of the word written right here. So let's leave all of this because this is what we're going to use to like show the meaning of the word. This is the styling. But now that we know we have this, what we actually need to actually get the meaning of the words is that we need a Python dictionary. But before we go into that, I'm going to show you the 
the Python library, not dictionary. So we need a Python library. I'm going to show you the library that we're going to use. But first of all, let's create, we have this form, right? Let's make sure that this form is sending within a post method and is, you know, sending it back to this page. Then we are going to get that word in our views.py file. So right here where we have this form, so this is the form for the search bar right here. So let's change the placeholder to input. word and what we want to do is that if you have an action of blank so it comes back to this page and let's just say method is we can actually use any method here because we don't really care if it shows the value in the url bar but let's just stick with post and whenever we use post we must always have the csrf token and now that we have that what we can just do is to make sure this has a name because we need that name. So we can say name equals to word. So that is done. So now let's see what that looks like. It says input word. It has a name named word. And then we can click on this button to search. And it's submitting this post. This particular um, this particular form is submitting it back to this page using a post method. So now that we have all of this, what we can now do is that we come into this views.py and right here where we have this dictionary, we want to get that particular word that the user submitted. So we're going to say if request the method is equals to post. So remember that I said that normally when you come to this page like this, we are using a get method to, you know, get this page or request this page. But when I sent a uh, Let's say I send word and I hit search. And because I'm using a post method to submit that form, now it's requesting this page again using a post method. So now that we know that if this page is being requested using a post method, that means a form is being submitted. That's when we want to get the value of the data in that form that is being submitted. So what we just need to do is now we say if request the method is post, that means if this page or this view is being requested using a post method, we want to get the particular word. So what we're just going to do is to say word is equals to request dot post word. So word equals request dot post word. So basically when a user types a word and it search, whatever the user inputs now is stored in this variable. So now that we know we have the variable stored, what we can just do, let's send that word back to this page. So we can just do something like this and say word should be given a value of word. So let's come in here now and right here where we have this, we can change that to word. So let's see what it gives us. So let me just enter. So it's a word reference before assignment. So this is because right here, what we are doing is that this particular, um, this particular error has happened a lot. It happens a lot. And this is because we are assigning this word to this variable. But this word variable is only present when this if method or this condition is true. So what I mean is that imagine this page is not requested using a post method. That means this condition is not true. So it's just going to bypass all of this, right? That means it's now trying to send a variable that doesn't exist. So that is why it gives us that error. So right now, when I just come to this page, I am trying to access this page using a get method. And because it only says create a variable named word when we are using a post method, it bypasses this condition and comes here, but then it doesn't see any variable named word. So that is the meaning of local variable reference before assignment. So before we assign it, it references it. So there are different ways to take care of this. You can either have this right here. So that means once is this, once you are using a post method, you can just return render this word, right? But if it's not a post method, you can just copy paste and just say, render this without any word so we can say this if i come here and hit refresh you can see that that works when we don't have any word it doesn't show but let's say i say america i want to get the meaning and it search it shows america right here so that that's taking care of it or we can do it another way also right here we can just say word is equals to blank so we can initially assign a blank value to word this will also work so if i come here and hit this you can see that it works. If I say America, you can see that it still works. 
So there are, I'm pretty sure there are other ways also you can take care of that particular error. Just depends on how you want to. So now that we know that we've gotten the word, what we can just do is that we can now use a particular Python library called PyDictionary. And this Python library is going to allow you to get the meaning of any word, basically any English word. So we're going to have to install that particular library. So let's quickly cut out of this server. And just so you know, to cut out of the uh, Python server, you need to type control C. It's going to cut out of that Django server. So then now that we know we have this, the next thing we want to do is just say pip3 install py dictionary. So let's make sure the case are working. Cool. So I have it installed. So it's going to say requirement already satisfied. But for you, it should go ahead and install that. So let me run the server again and close this. Now that I know I have that, what I can just do is to come into my views.py file and I'm just going to say from py dictionary import py dictionary. So it has imported a py dictionary for us and we actually need to initialize this py dictionary. So we're going to say down here, we'll say dictionary should be equals to by dictionary. So we just initialize that and save it in a variable named dictionary. So now we can use this dictionary variable to access this particular package. So right here, what we just want to say that once we get in the word that the user is searching for, then we're going to say meaning. So we're storing the meaning of that word equals dictionary, right? Dot meaning. And then we want to give it the word. So this particular format is that it's saying that get the meaning using this dictionary package, get the meaning of this word, right? So this word can be any word. It can be, let's say America, as I said, right? But what we want to do is that we want this word to be whatever the user inputs, not just any word we input there. So that's why I change it to the word variable and study a meaning. So what we can do now is that we can just send this meaning to this, our page now. So let's say we do this. Same meaning equals meaning. So that should work. So actually, let's take care of this because if we try to read refresh, it's also going to say meaning assigned before before using it. So what we just want to do is let's remove this and what we're going to do is to put this here, copy paste that and bring it out of the function, out of the condition. So now we can remove all of this so that if it's using a get method or get request, it's just going to render this without sending any variable just to avoid any errors. So we have this, right? We can hit save and we're going to come in here and right here where we have this pin, whatever this is, we're just going to change all of that. So it says all of this, right? So we change all of this right here. And change all of this. Let's just say minute. So this meaning, if I come back here to explain what it is, it stores the meaning of this word, but in like a dictionary format. So you're going to see what it prints for us. Let's come back here now. And let's say America. So it said function object does not have no attribute meaning. So the reason why this is happening is because there is a clash in the naming convention. If we come in here, you can see that we have this particular function named dictionary. So right here, Django is thinking or Python is thinking that we want to use this particular function again in here, but that's not what we want to do. So this is because right here, we also have a variable named dictionary. So let's just change this to like another word. So it doesn't clash with this particular function. So let's say dictionary. Yeah, let's just say dictionary in a shallization, something like that, which is a weird name convention, but that will take care of the error. So let's save this now and let's come back in here. Now, if I try to say, let me get the meaning of America and hit search. So now you can see it says America and it says noun. It gives us the meaning in noun and all of that. So as you can see, this is actually a Python dictionary that it gives us the, you know, the particular response in. So what we can now do is that we can just get this first response right here to this end. So to do this, we're just going to use the dictionary to get the value. So the key is noun, so we can get the value of this noun. So what we're going to do is to come back in here 
and just say meaning is equals to all of this but we want to say now so if i save this and let's try to do this again so let's say america so now you can see that it just gives us not american all of this all of this but you can see that it gives us more than one definition you can see that the definition ends here another definition starts from here and ends here so what we just want to do is to give it just one definition we just want to show one of this because now this is a list so to do this now what we just need to do is to say zero we come back in here hit refresh and then america so you can now see that it says america not american republic containing 50 states so this works and let's say i try to do i so you can see it says i an expression of greeting so this is a very basic dictionary that we've been able to build with everything we've learned from django so if i come back in here and go into this dictionary.html we can actually get rid of this um this one right here back so let's just get rid of that by commenting that out but apart from that everything is working successfully so if i just go to the page let me say indentation and it search you can see indentation a concave cut into surface or edge blah 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 but you can now see that we've been able to build this very simple word dictionary so i hope you understood everything we did in this video because we took what we've learned from this series and used it to build an english word dictionary so that's going to be all for this video i hope you understood what we did in this video and if you did please don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe and also drop in the comments what video topic you want us to cover next so having that said thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video